I want to spend a moment just explaining where current in this circuit actually can come from. So first of all, let's imagine that we have a switch in this space here and that the switch is open. That means of course that no current can flow and that there is therefore no potential difference between the two electrodes up the top here. Now if we illuminate the surface of the photoemissive electrode with some EM radiation, such that it has an energy which is quite a lot greater than the work function. We know that if that's the case, some electrons will come shooting off of this surface. And some of those electrons, but not all of them, will arrive at the wire electrode on the left, therefore, as it were, pushing the other electrons along in the circuit. Now, this means we have current because something is being pushed on here and something is travelling across the gap, i.e. an electron from the surface of the photoemitic metal. Therefore, we have a small current. Notice that it is indeed a small current because the meter says we're measuring microamps. Now, as if by magic, I've removed the switch and we're going to assume that this terminal is positive and then this one is negative. That means that our wire electrode up the top there is going to be positive too. Now, this means that electrons will be attracted across that gap and are more likely to hit the electrode because they've been attracted to it and therefore we'll get a more significant current. We'll talk maybe about what happens if the positive electrode here is actually negative a bit later on. We've seen then that electrons are coming off the photoemissive surface with a range of kinetic energies but perhaps what might not have sunk in yet is that they're also coming in with a range of directions. Next we've been asked to explain why we get the flat plateau of a constant value for current at certain values of positive V. And this comes down to the fact, as we've said before, that electrons are leaving the surface in different directions with different kinetic energies. So some of them, well, if there's no potential there, will just miss the wire electrode. So if you make that electrode on the left there positive, then even those electrons that we're going to miss, if the potential is high enough, will eventually get pulled in and hit that electrode. And so at this point, which is around about half a volt, every single electron being emitted from the photoemitted surface is arriving at the anode. Lastly then, we have to explain why it is that if the wire electrode on the left is made negative, as we increase the value of that negative, so the current reduces eventually down to zero. Once again, this depends on the fact that our electrons are being emitted with a range of kinetic energies. So here's one with a lot of kinetic energy and one with not so much. If you think about it, of course, the wire electrode is going to be physically enormous compared to the electron. So let's represent that by this big blue circle and sh shove a negative in there because we know it's at a minus potential difference. Now this means that the top of our two photoelectrons, the one that has a lot of kinetic energy, is going to have enough kinetic energy to overcome the repulsive force between the electron itself and the electrode. Therefore, chances are it will actually hit the, anode, the cathode and contribute to the current. For the other electron, which has less kinetic energy though, let's assume it doesn't have enough kinetic energy to overcome the repulsive forces. Therefore, it's going to deflect downwards or perhaps even back to where it came from. So as we increase the size of this negative potential, in this case up to about one and a quarter volts, we will see that more and more of the electrons are being repulsed away from the cathode and eventually we'll reach a point where none of the electrons arrive at all at the cathode and the current drops to zero. And this is what we call the stopping potential. Let's write this out like a mark scheme. So our first point would be to say that the photoelectrons are emitted with a range of kinetic energies. Our second point would be to mention the repulsive force between the electron and the negative electrode. The third point then is to say that as the potential difference becomes more negative, so more electrons are repulsed enough such that they fail to arrive at the electrode and so the current falls eventually to zero.